Hear this, an almighty, all-knowing, all-powerful God is sitting in heaven waiting to hear from you. David says that he has his hand his hand cupped behind his ear, listening for his children to ask him for great and mighty things that we know not. He's listening for us to pull down the strongholds of addictions that enslave our families, to pull down the strongholds of abortion and pornography, to pull down the demonic forces that are destroying the government of the United States. So what does he hear from our lips? Oh God, watch over the parakeet and water the grass. Let me tell you something. When you walk through these doors and you lift your hands to pray, I want you to remember that you're talking to almighty, all-knowing, all-powerful God, the creator of heaven and earth. The blast of his nostrils can split the cedars of Lebanon. He holds the seven seas in the palms of his hand. He weighs the mountains in a scale and the hills in the balance. You can ask him for things so staggering, so big, that God slides out of his chair and sits on the air and says to the angels, did you hear what he said? Ask him for things that are impossible because with God, nothing is impossible. Ask him to defeat the giants in your life because our God is a giant killer. Ask him to divide the sea before you and to bury Pharaoh and watch him turn your enemies into fish food. Ask him. Ask him to send fire from heaven as he did for Elijah and he will. Ask him to walk with you in the fire of the fiery furnace and be the fourth man in the fire and he will. He said you will walk through the fire and the fire will not burn you. You will walk through the water and the water will not drown you. Ask him. He's the God who cannot fail. He's waiting to show you great and mighty things. Pray, pray, pray. God in heaven wants you to have that power. God gets excited when you get down on your knees. He says, look angels, here he comes, here she comes. We haven't talked for a long time. Now that she's in a full body cast at the Methodist hospital, I think she's ready to talk. And he puts his hands to his ear. I wonder what she's gonna say. Oh God, water the grass while I'm in the hospital. Dear God, Will you water the grass while I'm going on vacation? God leans back and said, well, I, I thought she might ask for great and mighty things. I thought she might ask for me to heal her physical body. I, I thought they might ask me to do things impossible. Ask according to my infinite power. And God is saying, I want you to ask big. I, I want you to, God said, I want you to make me to slide to the edge of my seat and say, wow. Wow, listen to what they're asking for, to move mountains, to heal incurable diseases, to restore dead marriages back to life, to send a financial harvest that their minds cannot fathom. I want you to know God wants to do that. For he has said, you earthly fathers being evil know how to give to your children good things, but how much more, say that with me, how much more does your father which is in heaven who has all things, he owns all things, he has all power, how much more does he desire to do for you than you for your children? But you don't ask. I read a story as a child. It was the story of a mighty king of unlimited wealth riding through his kingdom on a horse with his knights and he met three peasants of his kingdom who were walking down the trail. And the, he saw the first one and the first one said, he, he saw, asked the first one, what do you want? And the first one said, I, I want your horse. And the king said, request deny. He said to the second, what do you want? He said, I want your house, request deny. He saw the third one said, what do you want? And the third one said, I want your horse. I want your house, and I want half of everything that's in your kingdom, and I want it today. And the king said, it's yours. And the nobleman gasped and said, what do you mean you've given half of what you've said to him? He said, yes, because I have all of this power, and I have all of this wealth, and I have all of this ability, and I'm tired of people of limited visions asking me for so little. This man has asked me for something that truly excites me. Men of vision excite me, and so I'm giving it to him right now. God is in heaven saying, what do you need? Do you need healing? Ask in faith, believing, and I will give it. Do you need supernatural wisdom to make a tough decision? Ask of me, and I will lead you in paths of righteousness for your name's sake. Do you need peace that surpasses understanding? Ask, ask, ask. 
for nothing is impossible to those that believe. No good thing will he withhold from those that diligently seek him. Do you need the impossible? Then open your mouth. Open your mouth in faith believing. You're not talking to the President of the United States. You're not talking to Bill Gates. Both of them together can't control their next breath. You're talking to the Creator of heaven and earth. He owns the cattle on a thousand hills. He uses gold for asphalt on the streets of heaven. He moves mountains. He divides seas. He'll give you wells you didn't dig, vineyards you didn't plant, houses you didn't build. He will make you the head and not the tail because nothing, nothing, nothing is impossible to you. The supernatural power that God gives you when you pray is to pray with another believer. The Bible says if any two of you on this earth can come together in agreement, whatsoever you pray for, God will give it to you. Listen to me. Two of you in agreement can do what two million cannot do in discord. Two of you in agreement can do more than two million in discord. Matthew 18 and 19 says, Again, I say unto you that if any two of you shall agree as touching anything, they shall have what they ask for, and it shall be done of my Father which is in heaven. Joshua and Caleb whipped the giants that two million people were afraid to fight. Why? Because they were two in agreement. Who were the people that entered the promised land? Joshua and Caleb. All the others died. Paul and Silas demonstrated two in agreement. They were in the jail for preaching the gospel. And rather than whine and roll out their lower lip and pout about being persecuted for being a Christian, in the midnight hour, they sang songs of praise unto God. And God sent from heaven the angelic squadrons that danced around that jail. And they walked out of that jailhouse with the jailhouse keys in one hand and converts in the other because of the power of prayer and the power of two. Two witnesses in Revelation 11:3. God says, and I will give you power to be my witnesses. That would be Enoch and Elijah who have not died, but are coming back to the tribulation to demonstrate the power of God. God sent his disciples out two by two. He's bringing them back two by two. They will have the power to turn water into blood. They will have the power to call fire from heaven. They will have the power to call plagues and drought to cover the earth. I want to tell you something that's real power. How do they get that done? They have two people coming together in agreement. Consider again now the supernatural power of two. Why the supernatural power? Because you have supernatural enemies. You have supernatural enemies. Paul wrote in Ephesians 6, 12, For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, that's earthly things, but we wrestle, wrestle against principalities and powers, against the rulers of darkness, against wickedness in high places. No, that's not Washington. That's wickedness that's in the heavenless. It speaks of Satan. It speaks of his angels. It speaks of his demonic agents because he has a kingdom of darkness that has rank just like the military. And they, com they are commanded by the prince of darkness. But two in agreement can bind the powers of darkness and destroy them. Jesus again sent his disciples out two by two. He gave them the authority to bind and to loose. Luke eleven twenty one 21 says, there's a strong man whose objective is to, to, to attack you, to destroy your marriage, your health, your finances, your peace, and your children. And what you do is that you come together in agreement with another believer with the power of two and in prayer, bind those supernatural forces and they are harmless to help you. Think of that kind of power. They are harmless and helpless to harm you. You have power, use it. You have authority, use it. You have dominion, use it. If you're being attacked in your finances, here's how you pray. Satan, I'm speaking to you and the demonic hordes that follow you. I bind you in the mighty name of Jesus and I confess the word. My God shall supply all of your needs according to his riches and glory. You don't need the lottery. You need the Lord of glory. Are you being attacked in your health? Pray this way, Satan, I speak to you in the mighty name of Jesus, and I speak against the principalities and powers that follow you. And according to the word of God, I confess that by his stripes I am healed. I shall live and not die. Jesus Christ is still the great physician, and he's going to heal me today in this church. 
Are you being attacked in your emotions? Are you controlled by anger, by fear, by depression, by resentment, by rejection, by bitterness of things over the past? This is how you pray because Satan is trying to control your mind to destroy you. Pray this way. Say, Satan, I speak to you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. He is the conqueror from the cross. He's the Lord of glory that has totally defeated you and humiliated you by dragging you through the corridors of hell. And he's soon going to bind you in every demon force that you have in the bottomless pit. But today I bind you and I speak to the spirit of fear. Go! I speak to the spirit of depression. Go! I speak to the spirit of bitterness. Go! I speak to resentment. Go! Whom the sun sets free is free indeed. And I'm free, free, free in Jesus' name.